partly because Bronstein offered Sharon a real respite from the Hollywood grind. Her career was going well too. She won another Golden Globe nomination for her role in The Mighty. And then on Valentine's Day 1998, they finally got married. But married life took a bit of adjustment for the movie star. I was at an event after the Jean Moreau event, a, a party, and you know people were coming up to me, and the fans were coming up to me, and autographing, and the pictures, and everything. And this woman came up to me, and went, Miss Stone, Miss Stone, Miss Stone, I have to tell you something. I went, Yes, you know, and I'm waiting to hear it. And she goes, Your husband is so handsome. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> he's stealing my thunder. <laughs> <laughs> he loved it too, I have to say. A change of scenery was just what the actress needed. I love living there. You know, it's a true life. It's a life where people are not, they don't care that much that I'm an actor. No, they're interested in other things. Everything isn't about movies. They're people having real lives, doing different things. It's interesting. I mean, not that I don't love movies. I'm obsessed with movies. But I need to be in a place where everybody else isn't obsessed with movies. Sharon traded her obsession with movies for something more important. I think during the period when I wanted to have a baby, I didn't feel responsible about anything except trying to have a family, and I sort of flaked out on my career. After trying to have a baby of their own naturally and not succeeding, the couple reportedly decided against fertility treatment and instead went for adoption. Rowan Joseph Bronstein was born on the 22nd of May 2000 and Sharon chose the Celtic name which means seal for her baby's name. Well I think for a person who's been really dedicated to her career, then to find marriage and motherhood brings another level of fulfillment that enables her to really put into perspective how important her career is to her. Up next, Sharon faces a life-altering moment that changes the star forever. Sharon complained of a severe headache and was diagnosed with a small aneurysm in the brain. Sharon complained of a severe headache and was diagnosed with a small aneurysm in the brain. She talked about a feeling of leaving her body and seeing her friends and close family members within a white vortex of light. When she came to, she made some big changes. She decided to give up smoking and alcohol, and that was just the beginning. Having a near-death experience can be like having 10 years of therapy all in one afternoon. I think there are two ways of responding to facing one's own mortality. We could just become immersed in it and miserable, or we can dance with it, and we can realize that there's more to life, and we can get something out of every moment, and really live life to the fullest, and bring back a sense of what is divine, and bring back our sense and our commitment to the community and find a new purpose. After her near-death experience, the actress became an activist. She lent her powerful influence to the tsunami relief effort. She led the Amfar benefit at the Cannes Film Festival, raising over $3 million for AIDS research, and she was honored as Humanitarian of the Year from the Harvard Foundation and also won a Human Rights Campaign Award for her role as the lover of Ellen DeGeneres in the TV movie, If These Walls Could Talk. I do work for the cancer institute. I do worldwide work to raise money for AIDS and for pediatric AIDS research. I think we're getting somewhere. I, I really think that progress is being made. Uh, we're really turning a lot of the attention to the vaccine. So it's exciting. The stuff is really happening. People are doing better. People I knew very well who were at the end, the end edge of their life are now working, doing great healthy. After some well-deserved time off to focus on health and motherhood, the actress made a comeback 
in the horror thriller Cold Creek Manor. Well, it was time to come back. I wanted to come back with a studio picture. I thought it was good to do a film where I played a mom since I am a mom. Like most Sharon Stone films, Cold Creek Manor required that the sexy blonde share her bed with a co-star. I was genuinely scared. You get in bed with a seven-foot bow of constrictor and see how you feel. The movie was well received, but Sharon stepped into another disaster soon afterwards as Halle Berry's nemesis in Catwoman. But as usual, Sharon made the most of it. Well, I think it's a story that talks about empowering women and how women can be and how women can change what women can learn from making mistakes with their lives. Living up to her own words, it turned out that Sharon had made a mistake in her choice of third husband, Bill Bronstein. They were divorced on the 29th of January, 2004. In fact, 2004 was to find Sharon involved in two more legal battles. Now, the actress has always prided herself on the fact that she's a natural beauty and has never had to resort to artificial means to maintain her youthful appearance. So, she sued a plastic surgeon from Beverly Hills who implied that he'd given her a facelift. Yet another lawsuit ensued when Sharon Stone sued the producers of the sequel to Basic Instinct because she said that she had made room in her busy schedule to make the film, turning down other lucrative offers. Well, they said that she turned out to be far too expensive with all her demands for luxury accommodation, then that they couldn't afford her anymore. Well, the film now is going ahead with Sharon Stone. Interestingly, some years back when she was first approached to take this role, she wasn't inclined to do it. I turned it down. I, I felt that it was wonderful when it was made, that I had as big of a success as I could possibly have with it. I personally don't believe that it's the time now for that subject. I think that time has passed. It may come again, everything does seem to circle around, and by the time it does, I hope to have a cameo. <laughs> Worldwide movie audiences and Sharon Stone fans will be thrilled to learn that she is going to reprise her role as the sexy bisexual femme fatale, although we don't know yet who her co-star will be. Well, you never go back the same, is the thing. It's become very important to me to play each character looking to find and understand love in some way because I want to have a personal growth from what I do. And, and I feel if I make choices that are negative, then I'll have negative growth. So I'm, I, I try to address them in that way. One of the actress's recent positive decisions was to become a mother again. On May the 11th, 2005, she became the mother of Laird Von Stone. She named the baby after her beloved acting coach, and used her own middle name. With two small children, a serious commitment to charity, and a schedule full of movies in various states of production, Sharon Stone keeps her focus simple. My only master plan is to try to do things I haven't done before and to try to be a better actor with each movie that I do. That's my master plan. And my plan is to try to listen. Listen to the world listen to what's coming to me, listen to what's asked of me, 